Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking to this is another why I love dot 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 video where we talking about things that I really like or no, <laughs> things I really love. So this episode is going to be based off of the episode or this, this, this episode of why I love is going to be why I love the first episode of Loki. And I guess might be wondering, like, that's an interesting, that's kind of interesting to talk about. Like, what about the first episode of Loki that really, um, you know, would, would really drove you to, like, make a whole episode of why I love, uh, like, about Loki? And before I even go into that, I need to explain why the Disney Plus uh, Marvel shows have been good. Well, why I've enjoyed some and not enjoyed others. I know there's only three, so you guys can probably um, assume which ones <laughs> I'm talking about. But when it comes to what I loved about WandaVision was the slow build, was the mystery element where you didn't really know where it was going, but you had your ideas. It was building towards something, and even till the end of the season, we're still we, we've built a somewhat um, a ground or like a working point too. Like we know things that are eventually going to occur in Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness, which will very much be uh, the one movie that we want to pay the most attention to. Prior to that, um, Winter and Fal the, like, the Winter and the Fal uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier is a show I, you know what, I really didn't, it was cool, but I didn't really care for it. It is what it is. I, it wasn't for me. It was one of those shows that I was um for lack for a better word i could kind of care less for i just it wasn't for me like i honestly didn't think it was that that good i don't think it was even that you know, worth watching honestly um but that's just me that's personally that was just me i watched a couple episodes and i just fell off of it i didn't think it was great i didn't think it was fantastic i thought it was a very self-contained story but while on the other hand wandavision was a very much in captivating story and, you know the the whole element of it just really drove the point home of not fixing one but giving one character closure while giving us a, a, a glimpse of what we're gonna see in the you know in the coming in the coming times but loki episode one guys loki episode one let me let me say this when i when it comes to loki and the the Marvel Cinematic Universe. His character is probably one of the most fun to just dissect. I think it's so enjoyable to see him from Thor 1 all the way to the Avengers Infinity War. So before we even talk about the what I loved about Loki, we kind of have to talk about Loki the character itself and all the, the slow building transformation that he's done from Thor 1 all the way to the end of Avengers Infinity War and I think it, it's a lot of credit to Tom Hiddleston his portrayal of Loki that really gave that character a lot more life than I think um like a lot you know previous of uh, writers have given him there are a lot of great writers who have done tremendous things with him but they are definitely uh it's definitely a, a credit to his craft the amount of uh the amount that he's able to capture with his acting ability uh tom hiddleston i mean when it comes to the character of loki it's it's very great from his first portrayal in thor one where he's very mischievous to um is uh, he's very mischievous we do see like a lot of different elements to loki we see him hesitate to kill odin we see this uh you know this almost hesitation to kill thor like, I, I, what I have to say is, Loki and Thor 1 honestly never felt like he wanted to kill Thor. As much as it, it seemed like he was, he was willing to hurt him and make him submit. But it never felt like his end goal was to kill his brother. It felt like he wanted his, like, keep his brother on Earth and punish his brother and then, you know, beat him to a pulp to where he could take his brother prisoner. And you, I think his whole thing was holding proving everyone wrong he was never thinking about the consequences he just thought about the his actions he never bared any consequences 
to the actions that he was doing. To him, he was thinking he could justify them, you know, the means justify the ends, very Machiavellian, that, you know, I deserve this, this, and that, and all those who stand in my way, I'm going to show them that why I'm truly king. And, you know, of course, seeing him in Avengers, we see that that ego is definitely inflated with the help of um, the, the, what do you call it? With Thanos, Thanos giving him two, well, yeah, giving him one Infinity Stone, which was of course the Mind Stone, to go and get the Tesseract, which um, harbors the the Space Stone, and we can see through this invasion of New York City, Loki very much plays on that pageantry to the point where even Tony Stark is like, yeah, he's a diva. He wants a whole audience. He wants this and that. He wants us to look at him. Why? Why does he want us to look at him so much? And it really plays in the fact that to to Loki. His whole character is about coming off as this regal, this this godly figure, this king. Like to him, that is everything. Even when Thor and him fight, there is this like somewhat. Reg I wouldn't even say regret. This is idea of like, look, even if I wanted to stop this, I can't. But to him, it doesn't matter. This is all just like again, his means will justify these ends like whether or not a lot of people are getting hurt and dying he feels like he's doing what's best for him it's very selfish and come into the dark world which is i think like literally right after avengers like like right after we, we get into avengers after we leave avengers he he's a prisoner his mom's begging for him and there's this kind of like the best way I can say it is if Thor takes after Odin, we can tell that Loki was a mama's boy. To him, he, he didn't have the strength that Thor had like Odin. He had the conniving and the, I would say, the the, bewitch, the bewitchment. But he, he just very underhanded. Someone, he was basically a magic user. He was born to be a magic user. Despite being a frost giant, I don't think frost giants have magic too much. But his mom, like, literally made him... If, yeah, because like I said, if Thor took over his dad, his mom took, you know, Loki in and made him give him magic. Every ability he knows was basically from his mom. And I think they kind of even um, capped that or even talked about that in Thor of the Dark World where he's like, I taught you everything you know. And there's, there's that moment when he tells his mom, you're not my mom. Because to him, calling Odin not his father is very much a son thing to do against his adopted dad to it, it it can in a sense prove the fact more that loki does see odin as the father figure but to call him his own father it, it just it takes away his rebellious spirit and that own sentence dooms him with his mother when he has to like he has to stand on those words when he's like well you're not my mom like those very words that he obviously does not believe when they slip his mouth like he has to say that to the one woman in this world who's honestly made sure that he was taken care of the reason why his sentence is not death in asgard is because frigga or frigga made sure that her her son would not be destroyed it's it's a very it's a very emotional scene especially especially when frigga dies this movie with loki being the honest the god um, factor in it by sending one of the dark elves one direction thinking he can handle Thor again this is just to to him everything is just to make sure Thor looks like an idiot Thor looks like a meathead everything isn't to kill Thor it's just to I, I honestly do believe in this entire series that Loki's never believed that his brother couldn't win you know what I'm saying like he thinks he can outsmart his brother but he doesn't want to kill Thor. If he wanted to do that, he could have done it in many different ways. He really just wants to make his brother feel small. It's basically he wants to make his brother feel small, just how he feels like his brothers made him feel small. And in the scene when they find out their mother's the, the death of the mother, like Loki is just destroyed. He's it's it's the idea of like I really the last words I ever told that woman was she's not my mom. And it's like you really have to take it like the movie doesn't really capture 
that too much it does glance on it it does touch on it but it, i wish they would have spend more time on that like uh, establishing the relationships that the individual relationships that each that each of them had with their mom i think that would have made the scene much more impactful hell it would have made it more impactful if we like saw back like a background of little loki feeling that feeling of favoritism of course odin taking thor and that that comfort he can find in his own mother that would have made the death of Frigga much more impactful at the time and it would have made us felt more it would have it would have made us feel a little something for loki before his quote-unquote death it would have made us felt like dang like he really loved his mom at the end of the day like that woman was as much as much importance to him than he led to believe of course, we see Loki sacrifice himself to save Thor, only to like supposedly die, not really die, and uh, put Odin in a trance and send him down to Earth in a what do you call it, asylum, while he rules Asgard, pretending to be his dad, which he really didn't do a bad job. There was definitely realms that were stacking up, ready to attack, but he did kind of lead him into this kind of Renaissance glorious age, and that's when we get to the events of Thor: The Dark World where you know again like we're we can talk about all the development that thor is going through but the development that loki has loki feels like he he's won like he this is a loki who got what he wanted he became king of asgard it wasn't it's not him per se he's portraying his dad but it's this idea of like this is a loki like, who feels like this would well, this where asgard would be if i was ruler it would it would be kind of party all day you know party all night kind of bullshit and um you know during the, the play scene we do see this playful side of loki where he's just like he again he loves his pageantry this is him fe um, inflating his own ego with the whole play about um you know his uh, quote-unquote uh heroism on <laughs> against the dark elves but it's it's all of this it really is all of this that and like like builds loki up to the scene where odin passes away and since Loki has been Odin for a t some time now, and you know, having this recognition from his father, his father's final moments, not fighting him, not lecturing him, well, not really lecturing him, but giving like this confirmation that, wow, like, you know, your mom would have been proud. Your spell was really strong. I could, it took me a while to break free from it. Like, it's, it's giving his son this compliment it's giving his son this this compliment that you know like hey like you actually you're you're getting pretty powerful he assures both his sons this piece an idea of like asgard is us it's not our world it's the people i think that message really clams home into them when he tell his final parting message to like to loki and thor of course is i love you my sons not distinguishing like you know saying loki's adopted or anything to him at the like, to to the thing that loki's always overshot is that he's always felt like he's the outsider because he's adopted when in truth his parents loved him even more because he wasn't theirs in a sense it's kind of the idea of like you shouldn't take our love for granted because of course we love thor he you know we love thor as much as we love you and that should say something especially if we're not biologically you know very good odin's son they took you in and they loved you as much as they loved their biological son you you need to like understand that and i think that that weight of time has finally hit loki at the end when he has no mom he has no dad he, all he has left is his his brother and their big sister who comes in and kind of wrecks everything and even hella when loki speaks she's like well you talk like dad and you don't look like she does the thor you don't look like dad and it's the idea of like loki very much has probably taken a lot from odin in the sense of how to speak to people how to talk to people of course he fights his own conniving ways but the diplomacy that the diplomacy that the diplomacy is very much something that he's learned as being odin and also pretty much allowing us to kind of get a glimpse that he's paid attention how to be king like this isn't something that he just you know randomly talks about as being the king of asgard like to him he really put an effort 
it's 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 a little moment that you can kind of like infer a lot on like it's like I'm, i feel like i'm stretching it a lot just by inferring this much but it isn't it isn't out of the question to assume that especially when their big sister who they have not ever met is able to recognize those qualities established by their parents of course we see loki tried his best to like somewhat schmooze around the collector back in sakar's world that way he can eventually get thor to like you know hold. like again his master plan is like look let me schmooze around i'm gonna get in his inner circle my like maybe i can get you you know like a slave or a desk job here or something and we can be solid and it's this idea of like like loki really is content about like finding a way to survive and rise in power and eventually hopefully like hit him it's rule the place a situation that he has going and it's it's very much fun to recognize the fact that he includes thor in this again not having very much family left only having a sister who wants to kill both of them and a brother who you know lack for a better word is you know kind of a goofball his whole thing is i want to like keep the family i do have safe even to the very like again he puts these he puts all of this under his what he wants as a person that's the hardest thing to like not to justify loki is is to understand that yes he loves his family very much he loves his mom he loves odin he loves thor but again if this inhibits what he gets out of life or this inhibits what he gets out of um what he wants then he has to put it under him and get what he wants first or at least find a way for him to get what he wants and try to make everybody else that is like his family or his loved ones somewhat happy or put him in a situation where he like can at least be content where they're at and it, <laughs> it's kind of like the person who wants to have his cake and eat it too like he wants to be able to be selfish but you know not lose the respect and love from his family it's it's really interesting it's very fun to play with and to like again um this is inference up the ass but it is it is not far jump it is a it is a decent length to like kind of jump to understand to connect these points but again it's not out of the world it's not out of the world it's not far, like far off a question but um again seeing him kind of be tricked by thor and like make a team with thor and kind of be like all right well let's go back let's go fight our sister then we'll see what we can do and even when he's like his whole thing to betray thor to steal the ship to run away because again he wants to preserve himself for as much as he loves his brother and wants him to survive he needs to survive first before anything ella will kill them and he kind of was like i don't want to go into a fight that i know we can't win while thor is it's you know it's a it's a fight worth having and <laughs> It is funny that even after he gets found by Korg and the rest of the rebels, he's like, you know what? Let's go to the Asgard and let's go help my brother. Like he very much could have led them in another place. Again, these warriors didn't really have anywhere else to go, but he did lead them to this to save Asgard. And again, this is Loki leading. This is him saving the people of Asgard, um, leading them to victory, and even fighting Hela with his brother and Valkyrie at the end. Of the end of the movie again this is a different loki even when he takes the test rack he, he he is preserving himself first he gets a bargaining ship just in case but it's still going around helping his brother helping like helping his family stay alive to the very end even then this would bring us to infinity war in infinity war we get to see him at the very like he, why he took the test rack why when thanos ready to kill everybody loki's the first one to try to do what he can to protect his family even when he like declares his name it's a very much impactful scene loki lafison son of odin what a what a beautiful testament although he is lafis son, La Lafi's son he is a son of odin he is an odin son and um to see him just get his neck snapped and tell tell thanos he'll never be a god it always felt like his character was never fully redeemed we did see it going in the right direction we saw these um these these little twinkles of like possible redemption hopeful redemption but that 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 
that scene where it's taken away from us when he gets his neck snapped and his brother's forced to watch and cries. He tells his brother, one day we'll ride together and we'll win together. You, you have to really impact all the love that they all have for each other. That this, again, family is, uh, family is an F word. <laughs> family is a motherfucker. But it, it, it is it is really ripped from us that we couldn't fully see the, the flower blossom. We were seeing it bud. We were seeing it. We were seeing the roses grow, but we never saw them fully bloom. And that's how it felt with Loki being killed at the end of Infinity War. That's what with Endgame giving us this alternate original Loki, this Loki that takes us back to the first point, which was where he was no character development whatsoever. This is the same pageantry Loki who feeds his own ego, inflates his own ego, and to the very end, it's still very a mockery and hasn't learned any lesson because he hasn't had to face any deaths of the people he loves. And this is what brings us to finally, we can talk about the Loki episode one and why I love this first episode and why I think this first episode is better than WandaVision's first episode and definitely way better than Captain America and Falcon's uh, first episode. And it's what it does with Loki that these movies have done for the past uh, 14 years and they're in six seconds it does this the scene when Loki is looking through his memories his his other versions time um, history and he sees his mom die because it was his fault and then before we even talk about why this scene itself is the reason why I love the episode we need to talk about his conversation with Mobius which was Mobius trying to get inside Loki's head and Mobius really pressing these points that Loki's never actually he's never actually had to face consequences or he's never had to be questioned about this which was why do you do this like what about this is mischief what about this is funny to you what about this is exactly what you wanted like is this what you want is this mischief and it's when Mobius is grilling him he goes you kill your mom you know that right like your whole existence like you and your whole life you have to like your whole existence has to lead to your to you killing your mom and it's this kind of undetermined fate where Loki again doesn't want to hear these consequences. He doesn't want to have to face them. His whole life has been trying to like do what he wants and not have to face these consequences. To believe that he, you know, he can liberate the whole world, and that's his duty because the weak should liberate the weak or something along those lines. But it's when he, Mobius keeps grilling him and grilling him, saying, "So you like this? This to you?" is what you want is what really aggravates loki and pushes him to try to escape is because he's never had to face his consequences face on but now that he gets to see him first firsthand it, it changes him it's very much like like living a simulation life of what you could have had and waking up and realizing remembering everything in that life everything you've experienced 20 years and it's only been 20 seconds and for you to slowly unpack what all that means. What does it mean? Did that life not mean anything? Even though I felt everything of it, anything like I I've can recognize every emotion that I felt. Like, is it real because I believe it's real, or do I? Is it real because it felt real, or is it fake? These are these are hard things to tackle. And so when he see when he sees his alternate, you know version of himself you know he sees the the death of his mom he sees the last conversation with odin he sees the conversation he has with his brother about how has like how his family genuinely feels about them and it's at the end of the day like he kind of it's very much a reality check like damn like i was lucky enough to have family i was lucky enough to have love in my life and i all i did was put what i wanted over it a very a lesson that the our, you know the Loki who passed away didn't get to learn, or he didn't fully get a chance to like um, fully experience. But this Loki's like what the Loki didn't, what the Lo past Loki didn't get in 14 years. This Loki gets in six seconds was I took what I had for granted. I took my mom's love, my dad's admiration for me, my dad's love, my brother's love for me. I took that. And just made sh as much as I knew it was there, I tugged it under what I wanted. Selfishness. 
the one Mobius asks him when he when he doesn't even Mobius doesn't even ask, he tells him, like, it's an illusion. All of this I do is because I'm weak. I'm not like he's it's 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 a very much insecurity of himself that he likes to believe he's smart. He likes like this if he's not over one way or another, then he's weak. Is very much Loki's whole thing. It's the very much insecureness of a person. If he's not witty, charming, you know, conniving or anything like this, like then he is weak. And to be to be weak to him is I wouldn't even say his biggest fear, it's his biggest insecurity. That's why he does, he goes these lengths to make sure that doesn't that that isn't the truth. That's why he goes to the lengths of trying to rule New York, trying to hurt people, make them feel small. It's so he can feel in control and powerful, unlike how he really is. It's such a fun, such a fun topic to talk about. It's such a fun, like, it's such a fun um, beat to play with when he does it too. Like the way Tom Hiddleston like portrays that moment, that defeatedness after learning everything, after um, fighting with one of the time uh, variant soldiers and talking to Mobius, that vulnerability is captured so perfectly. It's captured so beautifully you believe it and you can you feel like you're peeking through the the, the trueness of loki that took 14 years to even get a glimpse of we get that and that was only done in, in such a small fragment of time this was just it's basically seeing the situations that you caused the death of your people ragnarok the, um, the death of your father the death of your mother like he very much is the reason why all these things very like all these things happened and you know i wouldn't be surprised at the end of loki like this is just a big thing is his his big wish for once or his he the time lords do exist which i i don't know if they do or not i feel like it's propaganda i feel like we're gonna have a fun twist at this where loki's like wish to like fix the timeline is that he can make a timeline where his mom is alive or he gets to go into a timeline where he gets to experience those moments with Thor, Odin and Fr um, Frigga again he can restart it I wouldn't be surprised if kid Loki is it comes into play I know a lot of people we've already we've this, I'm recording this after watching episode 2 so I know female Loki's in but I wouldn't be surprised if we see kid Loki and if that's the way this uh, this story for Loki ends, is that his his um he gets a second chance with all the memories of everything he had, he gets to live a second chance, knowing everything that he's done, and he decides that for once this is how he's gonna he's gonna enjoy what he has. And again, like it's so awesome to see. And again, it's led us to believe that he what he wants is just. To add himself back into the timeline or talk to the time lords and gain an audience with them and get something like rule the timeline and rule in like you know all the multiverses and branch timelines and stuff but i really don't think that's what that i think the, sh the whole show is building loki to see like how that his whole his whole um facade of being king of gods isn't going to make up for it that he's going to be able to find something stronger i kind of hoped that female thor or female loki was going to like the other the time variant loki was going to be a, a version of thor but i really do think we need to see thor and maybe even if we don't see thor maybe brig the actress who plays briga a frigga or even anthony hopkins as odin i think we need to see somebody from his past to come and really um put that weight on him uh, that weight of change that weight of uh remembering the past i think it's gonna be his mom i really wholeheartedly believe it's gonna be frigga i think she's gonna come in and he's gonna give us this kind of uh i want to suggest a position but she can give us this insight on loki that it's gonna it's gonna give me what i wanted from thor the dark world that i get i wanted to get in thor the dark world that i didn't get but it's gonna put it in the loki show I can only hope because it's honestly like again this first episode is wild like there's so much in loki's character that we get to hack and this is like us starting fresh with a new loki that 
has a lot of flaws that we want to fix and polish up and he kind of fixes himself a bit by seeing the the dents and buffs that the other loki had and the other experiences that loki had it's so it's so fucking awesome it's really it's really it's a really testament to the show and to tom hiddleston of course how this loki has grown in character development especially just giving up the vulnerability something that the pat like again the the, the original timeline loki could not do which was admit his own vulnerability the very end of death he was capping but this loki to admit his vulnerability to admit his weakness to just be vulnerable to mobius a stranger someone he's not emotionally con connected with wow wow like it is just it is just what made me go like well, okay this show was already like s tier on my book like wandavision took at least two to three episodes to kind of make me go like oh shit like i cannot wait to see what's going down loki episode one off the bat like i was already hooked the, like when they started pressing him i was like oh where's this going can this go in a good direction are we gonna force character development that, that took 14 years and we're gonna do it in a in like a 48 minute show they do it they really do and i'm they do they do it in a way that doesn't feel rushed that doesn't feel forced that doesn't feel overly complicated they do it in a way that's just very simple which was they make him face the consequences of his action they show him the very consequences and he has to kind of just absorb that and channel that and understand like damn my decisions have hurt the people i love and i actually give a fuck about the people i love <laughs> <laughs> it really did make me because I one thing I really loved about the Thor movies or like the relationship between Thor and Loki is the relationship he has for his family the actual love some of my favorite mo moments from the Thor movie are his interactions with his family it's a very I guess it resonates hard with me because I wouldn't say my family very uh unorganized I would say like there is this feeling of like relatability for you i think all families have this like there's the golden child there's the other child there's the doting mother who loves the her baby and then there's the daddy who loves the eldest and, and there's a sister who you know chaos <laughs> um there's the, the brother's best friend who more like a brother than your actual brother and it, it's just like a lot of stuff that really does make you feel like type of like uh i can i can kind of gel how loki very black sheepish oh again guys i really i highly recommend you watch that first episode i think that that first episode is really powerful especially if you're a, a marvel fan if you're coming in fresh not really like you're not really bored movie or you're not really into it like the first episode still hits you like still grabs you in an emotional place where like, you can physically see the character development and uh, uh, Loki, as I call him, Tom Hiddleston, they're basically the same person. It feels like <laughs> it feels like I'm very. Um, but yeah, guys, definitely, um, definitely powerful scene. That scene alone is my favorite scene of Loki. Like they could have him and Thor teaming up in like the season finale. I still will say that final scene. I mean that 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 small scene with him looking at the past action his mother dying his father dying his farewell to his brother and his you know his his own death has pushed him to kind of develop in a way that we we are hopefully going to keep seeing which is him being vulnerable and him being a different loki still uh, still attributing the same loki kind of style especially after episode two i don't think um you know loki Really evil, but I think we're gonna see a Loki who discovers himself and understands. I'm not evil, but I'm not good. But I am who I am. Hopefully, this is the lesson he learned towards the end, and hopefully, he gets what he wants. I don't know what he's want. I don't know how the story series is gonna end. I'm really shocked, and I'm really kind of excited to see where this goes. But anyways, guys, this is gonna be it for this is the why I love series. I thought good old 30 minute episode about why i love loki episode one i talked about the you know of course the past movie development of the, the original timeline loki and how compared to this that past time past timeline loki and this timeline loki is 
there's big differences our new loki has attributed something that the past loki couldn't which is being vulnerable and out outwardly saying his own insecurities that is again to be vulnerable to be is a powerful development it is powerful especially a character like loki confident physical narcissistic like to, to, to bring that out and to make that seem believable to make that feel deserved oh tom hiddleston tom hiddleston wow this is as i knew for i always said i thought one division was gonna be my favorite out of the series coming out but who knew loki right now is taking the cake for me i'm i think i'm more excited the one division i just like the mystical magical side but this side is the, the loki tv show has got me hyped more than wandavision wandavision i felt like oh here we go we gotta muddy through the waters before we get to the good stuff loki i feel like we're already in the good stuff and it's only gonna get better but anyways guys peace out this is your boy poppy wolf peace and love i'm gonna stream tomorrow at i'm gonna try either three o'clock three three o'clock um p.m or six p.m be on the lookout for that it's your boy poppy wolf scene peace out peace and love i will catch you guys tomorrow so bye love you peace and love